Diamond YouTube and welcome back to another set review on the channel. Today we are going to be looking over the Evolution set that has started to release a little bit. Um, the pre-releases were this weekend. I think there's another set next weekend. I'm not sure. I know it's going to be released very, very shortly. I think, I think it actually releases next week for Toys R Us and all sorts of other brands, and then in retailers the following week, starting November. So, best way to celebrate it is to kind of see what's actually in the set itself and why is everybody so hyped about it so most people here are very nostalgic on base set pokemon for those of you who don't know evolutions is the cp6 20th anniversary set for pokemon um, the tcg has been around for 20 years and it has been doing a fantastic job of keeping itself uh renewed innovative <clears throat> Obviously, needing to bring back cards and reuse mechanics and all sorts of things, but trying new things out at the same time. For today, we are going to be looking over the 20th anniversary set and what it has involved. So we're going to start off with the very first Pokemon in the text, well, in this set, Venusaur EX. Now this is a carbon copy of Venusaur EX from X and Y base set, so we'll be able to use Venusaur but there is a twist, and that'll come a little later. So first off, Venusaur EX has Poison Powder, 1 Grass, 2 Colors, it's going to do 60 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now Poisoned. Uh, you also have Jungle Hammer, 2 Grass, 2 Colorless, it'll do 90 damage, and you get to heal uh, 30 from this Pokemon. It is not an amazing EX, but the Poison is fantastic. What is amazing about this is it can use Forest of Giant Plants and a Mega Evolve turn one into the Mega Venusaur, which is really handy. So if I don't have m ways of getting it out early, or I don't have any moves to do first turn, let's Mega Evolve. At least it's it's down, it's out, and it's ready to go. Mega Venusaur is a pretty strong Mega in a sense. It's not going to be tier one deck listings or anything. Like don't get me wrong with that one. Uh, but for three green or for three grass and one colorless, it's gonna use Crisis Whip, 120 damage, which is not too bad. Uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed and poisoned. So unless you have a switch or some way of getting that active Pokemon out of there by evolving or some sort of way, they're stuck there taking damage, and you're just gonna continuously hit them until that particular Pokemon is down. Uh, now here. Here's where it gets amazing. Like I said, guys, this is the 20th anniversary set. They pretty much reprinted base set. There are obviously some cards that are not here. The Venusaur line, the Blastoise line, the Alakazam line, and a few others. But a good majority of the set has returned and a little bit updated. Now, I'm not going to go over every card. Like, for example, this Caterpie and Metapod, I'm not going over them. They're not very good cards. Um, I'll go over most of these Stage 2s that are there because you never know they might actually be playable you guys will find a way to make them work in a deck and if you guys do have deck ideas don't ever hesitate to send them in because you never know maybe i'll showcase it on the channel for you guys to use and enjoy as well all right so we're going to start off with beedrill beedrills are stage two from the weedle line rock and poison sting for one grass energy it's going to do 30 damage your opponent's active po pokemon is now poisoned which is not a bad one damage attack, considering the fact that you can get into Beedrill turn one if you have that Forest of Giant Plants. It's got Swarming Sting as well, one grass, one colorless. This attack does 40 damage times the number of Beedrill you have in play to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It does not need to be the active, uh, which is, uh, you don't apply weakness and resistance uh, when damaging a Benchmon. That's typical. Um, again, what's really cool is if you can build your deck around this thing, you might be able to get some damage off. Now, you'll have to be able to be really lucky to get really high damage here, considering you're going to need all four Beedrill to get 4, 8, 12, 16, 160 damage. There's no muscle bands or anything, so you can't really up that kind of damage. You're not being able to use Fighting Fury Belt. I don't know how I see about it, to be honest with you. It'll be quick. There's a lot of cards you need to actually run it, because you'll need a 4, 4, 4 line of Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill. Because Rare Candy is not really going to be viable, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, next up is Tangela has Wrap, 
20 damage. Flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. It also has poison powder, 3 grass energy, 30 damage, and your opponent is now poisoned. So some, some status effects here. There's a lot of statuses, I think, in this set, which is really cool. Moving on, though, we have the infamous Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. Charizard is that beast of a stage 2 fire type Pokemon with 150 HP. Has the ability Energy Burn. All energy attached to this Pokemon are fire energy. So it does not matter what color it is. You could be running blue, you could be running grass, and it's going to be a fire energy. Now, Charizard needs four fire energies to use fire spin. 200 damage is a lot of damage. We're going to be knocking out a ton of things. Most EXs, unless they're Mega, are going to get knocked out. Waylord, you're an exception, I understand. And you'll probably one-shot us, but we'll we'll figure something out. We'll make a trade-off or something. But there comes a price. You must discard three of those four energy, which, made, which makes Charizard very hard to run, because you are constantly needing that energy back in the discard pile. Now, this guy could be technically like a good partner for that Infernape that came in Steam Siege? But again, you're running two stage twos, so it's really hard to say. With that being said, we now have Charizard EX, Wing Attack, Combustion Blast. We've seen it. We've run it. It's an amazing card. Not amazing, especially now considering most of the tools that it needs to run properly are gone. But I like the card. Uh, we have Mega Charizard EX, two fire, three colorless. We get Crimson Dive. 300 damage, whatever this thing is hitting, is getting knocked out. Uh, this Pokemon does do 50 damage to itself. Unfortunately, I do forget what card it is, but there is a Pokemon card right now out there that actually does... I think, it, I think it's Mega Dragon Rayquaza? I might be wrong. That does very similar damage, very similar ability, and it does more. So it's like, if I'm going to run one or the other, I'd rather run the other. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to see a lot of play. I'll be honest with you, this set really doesn't have a lot of quote-unquote playable cards. Um, there are a few, don't get me wrong. There always is. Um, but yeah, this is my opinion on Charizard, Mega Charizard. I don't know if it'll actually see a lot of play. Next up is Vulpix. Now, we have Ninetales, has Abduct, actually it's Lure in um, English, because I've already got the card in my hand. It's a fantastic little card. Uh, Nine Tails for one energy, you can pretty much Lysander, and the Pokemon cannot retreat after either. So it's a very good attack, except that you don't do any damage. Now what does do damage is Fire Blast. Two Fire, one Color, so you're doing 120 damage, but you do have to discover one of those Fire Energies after. Being as it is, Burning Energy is a thing, which does work with the, uh, char the action- uh, the Charizard previously mentioned that I had to discard all their energy, but you would really need to pull a lot of fire energy to get that going, or burning energy to get that going. Now, we do have our very first break in the set. Nine Tails Break looks phenomenal, and it's not a bad card either. For one fire, one colorless, explosive fireball does 10 damage, but you have to discard all your fire energies to do so. Uh... But, you're going to do 60 damage for each energy discarded this way. So again, if I've got two burning energies, I'm going to do 130 damage, which is actually not bad. Considering it's two energy, I am actually very pro with this. I'm very, very pro with this. Um, next, we have Growlithe, who's got a very interesting attack. It's called Kick and Run. Uh, one colorless energy. You do 10 damage, but you do get to switch this Pokemon with one of your bench mods for the ability that comes with Arcanine. Arcanine has Burning Road. Once during your turn, when this Pokemon becomes your active Pokemon, so Growlithe needs to be on the bench and you can evolve it there, and then this can work. Uh, from the bench, you may move as many fire energies as you like from your Pokemon to this Pokemon. So, you can charge up that basic or set up everything else, and then once Arcanine's ready to go, you throw him in the active position for Scorching Breath. For three fire energies and one colorless, you could do 150 damage, which is not something to laugh about. Only downside is Arcanine cannot use it on the following turn. So, there is that. Um, 
You can easily set this up maybe with a, like a flowstone pattern, have a bunch of Arcanines, and then they, they just kind of switch in and out of each other, which is not a bad idea. Um, we'll see how it runs. We'll see how it goes. I, I, I'll, I don't know how it'll be. Um, next up, we have a Ponyta, no evolution in the set. Uh, we have Magmar, two fire energies for fire punch. Uh, sorry, Magmar has 80 HP. Uh, two fire energies for fire punch, 30 damage. Two fire, one colorless for flamethrower, it'll do 60, but you do have to discard a fire energy after. So a lot of discarding in the fire Pokemon in this set. Um, next up is another fan favorite EX, it's Blastoise EX. Let's be honest here, all the starters are huge popularity. So people are going to try and make these things work, regardless of how playable they actually are. Uh, Blastoise EX has Rapid Spin, two colorless energy, you get to do 30 damage, and you switch this Pokemon with one of your bench mods. Uh, then your opponent switches his or her active with one of their bench. So it's like a free escape rope after you've done 30 damage to their bench, which is cool, or to their active, which is cool. Uh, you've also got Splash Bomb, three water energies, you do 120 damage, you get to flip a coin. If Tails, this Pokemon does 30 damage to itself, which isn't really good. It's getting some ricochet from that bomb it just threw off. It's not really something that Blastoise should be doing. Should be doing something with those Hydro Cannons. Oh, but wait, wait! Here comes the cannons part. Mega Blastoise, three water energy, Hydro Bombard, 120 damage. This attack does 30 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it's actually not a bad Mega. It re it has a huge reminiscence of Mega Audino. The only downside to Mega Blastoise is it's not colorless energy. So it's very hard to use um, consistently. Whereas like Mega Audino, throw a double colorless energy on it. As our good old world champion used to use steel energy to keep the things going with Magirna, Cavalian, all sorts of things like that. This one you specifically have to use water energy. Now yeah, you could use Manaphy. And there, there are always going to be techs that you can use. But getting three water energy onto this guy is going to be a little harder. I think, anyway. Next up, we have the original Poliwag, Poliwhirl and Polyrath. Now, Polyrath was a huge play at pre-release because he was actually part of one of the bundles that you could get. I actually got Polyrath in my bundle, so it was really nice to actually get to play with these guys. It was awesome playing them. Uh, Polyrath has Jumping Punch, 1 Water Energy, and something similar to Arcanine where you do 50 damage, and if Polyrath comes into the active position this turn, uh, you're going to do 50 more damage. So it's like a revenge, uh, but you don't have to have someone knocked out. So you can do 100 damage, rotate out, 100 damage. One energy? You gotta remember, this is one energy. That's a lot of damage. So, I think Polyrath might see a little play. Not competitively, but in a bad deck Monday or something like that. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun to see it. Uh, you've got Whirlpool, 3 water energy, which is high cost again. Uh, considering you're only doing 80 damage. However, you are getting to discard an energy off the defending Pokemon, so you're gonna get to slow them down. Maybe not as much damage as you want to do, but when you're slowing your opponent down with the amount of energy they could potentially have, that is a huge uh, problem. Things like Xerneas and stuff, yeah, they, they stop you because they're just able to reproduce as much energy as they want. But there are some decks out there that rely on that one or two energy that's actually in there. So getting rid of it from Polyrath is great. You can get rid of double colorless energy, strong energy, it doesn't specifically state basic energy. So Polyrath might see a little bit of play for that. Again, not expecting a lot, but a little bit. Uh, next up we have the Seal and Dugong. Dugong has super deep dive, it's also got 120 HP for those of you who didn't see that. Uh, super deep dive, heal 40 damage from this Pokemon, and switch this Pokemon with one of your bench. So Dugong is something to be setting up for later. Uh, it has a way to get itself out of the active position, which is really good. Uh, it also has takedown, one water, two colors, it's going to do 90 damage, but you do have to do 20 damage to yourself. Doesn't make this Pokemon very, very playable. Uh, having the ability to heal itself off is great, but 120 HP is just, it's not enough to cut it anymore. So we'll see how it plays. Now what is a cool, really, uh, what is a really cool card is Starmie. Starmie is a stage 1, 90 HP, so it's not very bulky, but it has the ability Galactic Spin. Once during your turn, you may discard one of your cards in your hand. Then choose two basic energy cards from your discard pile, and then show them to your opponent. Put them into your hand. So this could be like a Professor's Letter plus a Mini Battle Compressor. I don't want, say, a Skyla in my hand. 
So I'm gonna sacrifice it to the Starmie, and I'll get two water, uh, two energies back in my hand. Or I'm gonna sacrifice a card from my hand, which is the original cost, and then choose two basic energies. So get get rid of one, get two. I like that trade-off. It's it's. I think Starmie could actually play out quite a bit, quite well here. Uh, it also has an attack called Star Freeze, one water, one color, so it's going to do 30 damage, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So it's got a nice little stun effect too, in case it does happen to get into the active position. Although, usually if it's going to be in the active position, it's probably going to get knocked out with its pitiful little HP. And even still with the pitiful HP, is Starmie Break. Starmie Break only has 130 HP, so he's not very bulky, but he's got Turbo Star. For one water energy, this attack does 100 damage to each of your opponent's break Pokemon. That's not a good attack. And the reason for that is, if we were playing in a very break heavy meta, it'd be perfect. It'd be like dealing 100 damage to each Pokemon EX. Breaks are not something that's very feared right now. Biting or maybe Greninja. So, to have an attack that really threatens out breaks is a weird, a really weird card. Especially considering it's coming from a break. So, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Maybe I'm wrong and the meta will change a little bit more towards the break cards as we uh, switch into Sun and Moon. Because you never know. I don't actually think they're going to be releasing breaks in the Sun and Moon sets. I think that is specifically X and Y. And now they're going to continue into new mechanics, which is exactly what they should be doing. Um, but we're gonna move on here. We've got the good old Magikarp and Gyarados! Gyarados with the Bubble Beam. It's also got 130 HP for those of you who missed it. Uh, 50 damage, flip a coin. If heads your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. It's gonna cost you three water energy! You need a lot of setup for this Gyarados. But he's also got Dragon Rage! Four water energy, 180 damage. Flip two coins if either of them is a Tails. This attack does nothing. HOLD ON! Magikarp is supposed to be the one that doesn't work. Why is Gyarados not working? Going for the Bubble Beam is the always usually the better option. Obviously if I'm going for a one-shot knockout, Dragon Rage is going to be the opportunity. But I have to flip two coins and the likelihood of getting two heads is like a 25% chance. That's not reliable in the slightest. I'm going to see people try and probably work this out, but overall, it's just not a strong card. Next up is the mascot of Pokemon himself, Pikachu, followed by his older brother, Raichu. Uh, Raichu has Discharge, one Lightning Energy, attach a Lightning Energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. That's not a bad card, or er, bad attack. You have Spark Bolt, two Lightning, one Colors, does 70 damage, you may discard an energy attach this Pokemon, but if you do, this attack does 70 more damage. So Raichu has the potential to do 140 damage. A bite, it's not all that, but if you can set it up with the Raichu break, he might see a little bit more play because of that discharge. Uh, we'll see how it goes. You can part again, you could always partner this up with Magnezone and stuff, but that's really junky. Like you're running two technical stage twos. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Speaking about Magnezone, we've got Magnemite and Magneton. Magneton does not evolve in this set. Uh, we have the Thunder Wave and... Uh, sorry. Magneton has 80 HP. We gotta remember the HP part. And for one Lightning, one Colorless, we're gonna use Thunder Wave. 30 damage, we get to flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Again, a lot of status ailments in this set. Which is really good because it makes... It makes these weaker Pokemon stand a little bit of a chance. You get the opportunity to, you know, paralyze, save yourself a turn, get yourself into a better position. Depends on the deck you're running. It also has self-destruct. One lightning, two colors, 80 damage. This Pokemon does 80 damage to itself. And it's not got the opportunity to use Fighting Fury Belt, so it's just going to get knocked out. We'll see how it runs, though. I don't see this guy making too much headway in the current meta. Next up is Voltorb and Electrode. Look at that rainbow coloring in the background. He is ready to explode. And really, he's not not really here to explode. They gave that to Magneton. 
No, Electrode actually turns itself into energy. Now, yes, he knocks himself out. By all means, he explodes, but the ability to zap is a little different. Once during your turn, you can knock out this Pokemon. So I have to give up a free prize card to my opponent to use this ability. That's a no-no right there. That is a huge no-no. Um, you get to attach it as a special energy card, so this can be removed by Polyrath uh, to one of your lightning Pokemon. This provides two lightning energy while it is attached to a lightning Pokemon. It's also got frontal lightning, 70 damage. I don't like this card. You can tell me all the world, like all the time in the world that you want, but losing a prize card to get two energy is not worth it. Not when you have things that could exponentially increase your growth like Max Elixir and Mega Turbo that are already in set and they're just an item card. This is like producing, yeah, I'm getting two energies out of it and it's guaranteed, but you're getting ahead of me in prize pool. And if I'm getting this late game, and, or if you're already winning the trade-off, this is not a good thing to have. We'll see, though. I'm sure somebody will get it to work. Don't you worry. Next up is going to be Electabuzz. We have the Thunder Bolting Lightning Pokemon with 70 HP. It's going to cost some 1 energy, 4 Thunderbolt, 10 damage, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Uh, we assault, we've also got uh, Thunder Punch, 1 Lightning, 1 Colorless. We're going to do 30 damage. Flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 10 more damage. If tails, this attack does 10 damage to you. So it's either give a little or take a little. This guy's not going to see a lot of play. Next up is the Skybird that I love and enjoy. If it wasn't for Lugia, Zapdos would be my number one legendary bird. Um, Zapdos is the lightning bird Pokemon, 110 HP. Thunder is its first attack, 2 lightning, 2 colorless, we're going to do 90 damage. This Pokemon does 30 damage to itself, which isn't very good. You've also got Thunderbolt, 4 lightning energy, you're going to do 170 damage, so not even knockout potential, and you have to discard all energy attached to this Pokemon. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad, because we do have Magnezone that can technically work with this thing, having the opportunity with so many supporters to get your energy back, now having Brock, now having Fisherman. Zapdos isn't terrible. The low HP cost can be fixed as well with Fighting Fairy Belt. So it's just a matter of getting four energy out. It's no Raikou. By all means, this is no Raikou. But it can be played. We're not talking tier 1, we're not talking tier 2, we might be talking tier 64, but that's alright. Next up guys, we're getting into them Psychic Pokemon now. That's right though, they switched Nidoran from Grass type to Psychic type, which is what they did for uh, a lot of Pokemon, or the Poison type. I don't know the set that they did it in, but here we go, we've got some new Pokemon in the new color. So Nidoran, Nidorino, and the Mighty Nido King are here in the Psychic format. Uh, Nido King has Tremor, one Psychic, one Colossus. It's going to do 40 damage. The, defo the defending Pokemon cannot retreat during the next turn. This is really good, as if your opponent is in a weak state and they want to retreat, they can't. They just can't do it. And it sets you up for Tail Swing, one more Psychic Energy, does 100 damage. So still not a lot. But this attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's bench basic Pokemon. So you gotta keep that in mind. In an EX heavy game right now, basics are still relevant. But I know most of them are turning Mega. This guy may not see play, especially because Mega Mewtwo is so po powerful right now. Uh, and he's got that psychic weakness. Uh, we do have the break though. Uh, Neo King Break has 180 HP, so that is not a laughing matter on HP. We have Toxic Pierce as the new attack, two Psychic Energy, one Colors. He pretty much gets his old original text, uh, er, his old original three, three energy attack back. Um, Toxic Pierce does 120 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned, and you get to put two damage counters in between turns instead of one. Or I can use Dragology, use the one attack, and it'll do four. I don't know. Uh, I don't, again, I'm going to try to because Neo King is one of my favorite Pokemon. I don't know if I'll actually produce a deck on here. We'll see how it goes. 
but it'll, it'll be really interesting to see how this goes out. Next up, we've got Ghastly and Haunter. No Gengar in this set, and unfortunately Haunter's not really all that great. He's got Hypnosis, 10, eight, 10 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. You also have Dream Eater, 1 Psychic, 1 Colorless. Dream Eater's gonna do 80 damage, and your opponent's active po Sorry, if your opponent's active Pokemon is not asleep, this attack does nothing. So you can pair this off with uh, Hypno with the All Night Babies, I think it was? I, I'm making a mistake on that one. But either way, you know which ability I'm talking about? The one that puts both parties to sleep. So you'll need a way to wake up Haunter. But you can at least dream here. It's not great. Uh, we have Drowsy, no Hypno in this set. So Pound, Confuse Ray. We have Coughing, he is a Psychic type now because of the Poison ability, or Poison typing. Uh, no Weezing in this set, so. It's all right. We, we'll, we'll see these guys probably later on in a future set where they, they get some remorse. Maybe? I don't know. Hopefully! Moving on, we have Mewtwo. Now, this guy was a promo. Uh, same was the Charizard and the Gyarados. And one that we have not seen yet. Um, this guy's got 130 HP. He's a basic. Two colorless energy you'll need for Psychic, which will do 20 damage. And it does 20 more damage for each energy on your opponent's active. So very, very similar to X-Ball. Except X-Ball included your own energy. This one just includes your opponent's. So it's not as strong, but it's what you expect from an on -EX. Uh You've also got Barrier for two psychic energies to prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. If any of your Pokemon used Barrier during your last turn, you can't use it this attack. This is kind of cool, depending on the situation, if they're doing like a two-turn setup, but I don't know if it's going to be amazing. I don't know if it's going to be like the best thing in the world when you can just go for a second and do a little bit of damage. Or maybe the barrier is necessary to set up that psychic potential. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It's still a pretty neat card, and in uh, pre-release, it was very strong. But in regular play, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to actually turn out. Next up, we have a new Mewtwo EX. Two of them in Breakthrough wasn't enough. We needed a third one in this set. It's got one colorless energy for energy absorption. You get to attach an energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon, which isn't bad. It isn't bad. Uh, you, have, you have for one psychic energy you can recover. Uh, heal 60 from this Pokemon, which again is not bad. It's not bad. I wouldn't really want to waste my turn healing, but especially when I've got damage change on another Mewtwo, which just gets rid of it all, and you damage your opponent, technically. Uh, you also have Cyburn, one Psychic, three colorless for 110 damage. By this point, I already want to be into Mega Mewtwo. I should not need all this energy. I don't really like this Mewtwo. I don't see it getting a whole lot of play over the damage change variant. With Shattershot, that guy just has so much more going for him. I understand when rotation happens and this guy is all by, him lo by his own. So he can still be here, depending on the rotation, of course. But I don't know. I don't see him getting a whole lot of play. Uh, moving on, though, we have a Mew, which was not actually part of base set, but it was a promo that came out and people loved it. So here's the sentimental reasons for it, and they wanted to include a Mew. Had they included the movie Mew, maybe that would have been more nostalgic for some other people, but, you know, I never saw this card, so I like it. It's something brand new for me. Uh, it's got Neutral Shield as its ability. It's also only got 40 HP, so for those of you who think this thing's going to take a hit, it's not. Get it out of there. Make sure it's alright for just what your purposes are going to be, uh, which is going to be to prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's evolved Pokemon. Now, on the English translation, it specifically says Evolution's Pokemon. I think they actually just meant Evolved. I don't know why they did that, but it could classify, if you really wanted to by text, that it's just the Evolution set. That's kind of weird. I'm pretty sure it's actually meant for Evolved Pokemon. Either way, uh, we have Sandshrew, which does not have no Sand Slash, so we have a Diglett, who's actually got a really interesting attack. Herbal ability. He's got Submerge. I'm not going to go over his attack. 
But he's got the ability to submerge. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks, both yours and your opponent's. Which is really cool. I wish it was on something a little bit more threatening. Because there are a lot of Pokemon that do damage to your bench. So like, if I was playing with Roaring Sky Zapdos, that 40 damage, I couldn't hit Diglett for one. And if I partnered it with just Diglett's, well, I can't hit him, so the 40 damage doesn't go off. Which is good. Now, moving on to Doug Trio. Again, I wish that ability was on someone more usable. To just make up for the lack of... It's because of what it is. Like, that ability is actually really cool. It's just not a Diglett. Speaking of Diglett, we've got the Trio Trio Trio. Not missing that hair yet. If for those of you who have been spoiled, I apologize, but I'm not saying nothing. We've got Slash, two colors that you get to do 40 damage. Not great, but we do have Earthquake for three fighting energy. We can do 130 damage. This act does 20 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. So it does... Hmm, I misplayed, but that's okay. I'm thinking of my pre-release and I misplayed. I actually took the 20 damage counters too. I was against the Doug Trio, but anyway. Uh, it does 20 damage to your bench, so you really gotta be worried about when this Earthquake goes off. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Doug Trio's have never really been too playable. I know people started using the one with the evolutions from Ancient Origins, which again, some of these Pokemon can be used with, giving you the ability to have weakness. But none of them have really seen a lot of plays since Ancient Origins, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, we have the Machop, the Machoke, and the Machamp is in the house. This was our fourth promo card. He's not bad. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent's attacks, place three damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So we're guaranteed that if they want to hit us, we're doing 30 damage. You know, we'll hold one of them with one hand and the other three go in. Got it. It's also got Seismic Toss, three fighting energy, we get to do 120 damage. So it's not a bad card. I really like Machamp and he's, he was always really... Uh, an immediate base set reminder because so many people had that first edition Machamp from the theme decks. Um, well, I don't know if it was a theme deck, but it was it was something that had Machamp in it, and everybody had one. What they didn't have though was Machamp Break. Machamp Break, three fighting energy, and he's got the Lasso Boomerang. That makes so much sense for Machamp. Hundred damage during your next turn. This Pokemon's attacks do. 100 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if I continue to use Lasso Boomerang, I can do 200 damage on the following turn. Or I can go back into Seismic Toss and I'll do 220. Machamp Break is actually not bad. I actually really do like it. It'll be hard to play considering it is a stage 3. But we'll see how it goes. If we get some fighting support back in the future sets, maybe Machamp will actually come out of his shell and be very, very versatile. But until then, I don't know. Next up, we've got the good old Onyx. Onyx has Harden. Or Stiff in the English version. Uh, for one fighting energy, it's got 100 HP. Uh, during your opponent's next turn, if this Pokemon would be damaged by an attack, prevent that da attack's damage done to this Pokemon if the attack was 60 or less. Unfortunately, a lot of Pokemon do more than 60 in current meta, so this attack ain't gonna do much. You've also got Rock Throw, two fighting energy, you get to do 40 damage. Don't use Onix. Please don't use Onix. Unless you're trying to get into a Steelix, but even then, there is no base, no non-EX Steelix, I think, in Standard right now. I don't play Expanded, so I don't know anything about that one. I just play standard, so please bear with me on that knowledge. Next up is Hitmonchan. He's got that jab back from that Gen 1 popularity. He's got 90 HP, so he's not got a whole lot going for him. But having that jab is really, really clutch. One fighting energy, 30 damage. Bop! That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do for this guy. He's also got special punch, two fighting, one colors. He's going to do 90 damage. Now, in the original meta, with Gen 1, that jab was a lot of damage for one energy. Hitmonchan was a top tier threat. When you have Pokemon with over 200 HP, 
that jab ain't doing much. So his his overall shine and his overall amazingness, I don't think he's coming back, guys. But you guys can prove me wrong. You guys can prove me wrong. Next up, we have Clefairy, who is a monster in pre-release. I'm going to say this right now. This thing took me out. Uh, I actually built a Charizard deck. I got the Charizard promo as my box, which I was so happy with. Um, but Metronome is easier to power up, and Metronome can do 200 damage to a Charizard. Blong. So let's go over why. First off, we have Sig, and first off, Clefairy only has 40 HP. So Clefairy itself is not bulky. But if we can get a special attack off, yes, let's do it. Uh, it then costs one colorless energy for Sig. Flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Cool, we've seen it, that's done. Metronome costs three colorless energy. It's still a fairy type, but no fairy energy necessary to use this Pokemon, which is really cool. Now, Metronome, you get to choose one of your opponent's active your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use that attack. Does not matter what it is, it could be a six energy costing attack, and you can still use it for three. With that being said, though, Clefairy's not bulky, so it'll go down after, usually, depending on the play. Now, a brand new Mega, or sorry, brand new EX to this set is Pidgeot. Pidgeot is amazing looking, I absolutely love it. It's got Mimic, or Mirror Move in the English. If this Pokemon was damaged by an attack during your opponent's last turn, this attack does that same amount of damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. That's really cool, because if they do a huge amount of damage, you can do a huge amount of damage back. And it's only for one colorless! That's great! He's also got 170 HP, I forgot to mention that. Sorry, guys. He's also got Feather Throw. Uh, three colorless energy, you get to do 80 damage. This attack does 20 damage to your opponent's benched Pokemon. That's good. That means I can get a little bit of chip damage on before hitting... BAM! The Mega Pidgeot's in the house! I love this thing. I love Pidgeot. was one of my favorite Pokemon in Gen 1 because you always use one. He's so usable. Now that he's got all this versatility, can he exchange it into the Mega... Like, into the TCG? And we'll see. Uh, he's got Mock Cyclone, 3 colorless energy, you're going to do 130 damage. You may have your opponent switch his or her active with one of his or her benched. So, you don't get to choose, but they're forced to switch that powerful active Pokemon out of the active position after taking so much damage. So either they get knocked out, or they're set up to be knocked out, and you've already done a whole bunch of damage to their bench through Feather Throw, it's a pretty cool combo. I actually do like it a lot. We'll see how well it's going to play out. I don't know how about that. But it'll be really cool. I really see this guy getting used with uh, Shrine of Memories. Just due to the Mimic, being able to handle a whole bunch of different attacks, having the Feather Throw to do damage to the bench, and then having that massive attack. Well, not massive, but 130 damage isn't laughable. Um, and then being able to switch your opponent out. There's a lot of versatility with Pidgeot. It's not going to one-shot, but we'll see how it goes. Next up, we have Rattata with that, uh, Facetitious Fang. Uh, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may discard all Pokemon tool cards attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Theoretically, guys, this is our counter to Garbodor. And it's a rat. Playing with garbage. Alright. Alright, he's got a whole 10 HP more than his original printing too, so he's a little bit bulkier. The rats have gotten stronger over time. Next up though is Raticate. Uh, it has Crunch, 10 damage for one colorless energy. You discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, which is actually a really good attack. Uh, it does slow your opponent down with a little bit of chip damage. Then you've also got Bite from the Shadows. For one color essentially, you get to do 60 times the number of special energies in your opponent's discard pile. So if they've got a ton of discarded special energies, this thing can do a ton of damage. If for whatever reason they're playing basic energy, this thing's going to do nothing. It's going to do nothing. You are literally going to be stuck with Crunch. I would run it with obviously the Raticate Break 
and still have a whole bunch of different options, but you're given all sorts of new things to do with Raticate. Hopefully Raticate Break will make a big comeback in the new meta, so we'll see how it goes. Next up is Farfetch'd League Slap for 50, which this thing is actually better than one of the slaps, or one of them we had in the theme decks, the one that does 30. This does 50 for one energy, that's scary. The only difference is Pokemon can't use League Slap on the following turn. Alright, that's a bummer. But, we get Pot Smash, 3 colorless energy, and we can do 50 damage. Hey, Farfetch isn't very good. Next up is Doduo, who does not evolve, it's just got Fury Attack, there's nothing to really speak of for Doduo, poor guy. Next up is Chansey, Chansey is 120 HP, which is a lot of HP for this set. Uh, he's It's a basic Pokemon, of course, with Scrunch, uh, 2 colorless energy, flip a coin of heads to prevent all damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. So we have the potential to not take any damage, which is cool. Well, we have a lot of potential to take a lot of damage, because, you know, me and coin flips, they don't work well. And then we've also got Double Edge for 4 colorless energy, so only 2 double uh, colorless energy drops. Uh, 80 damage, this Pokemon does 80 damage to itself. Whoa, that's a lot of damage! Chansey may not be playable. Just saying, that's a lot of damage. Like, that's not a lot of damage, and that's a lot of damage recoil. I don't like it. If it was 30, eh, but 80 to 80 is not good. It's just not good. Next up, we've got the original Polygon himself, Porygon. With Conversion 3, uh, choose Grass, or any of the typings. The defending Pokemon's weakness is that type until the end of your turn. Or until the end of your next turn. Cool, but not cool. I don't know how I feel about it. Let me know what you guys think of it, because to me, a 60 HP Pokemon that can do that isn't very good. I'll see how it goes. Next up, though, is probably one of the big money cards in the set. It is Dragonite EX, colorless version this time, so he's not weak to that blasted fairy. He's got 180 HP. He's got the ability Elevation. When you play this Pokemon from your hand, Onto your bench, you may search your discard pile for up to two basic Pokemon, excluding Dragonite EX, and put them into your hand. This is a gorgeous ability, especially for like Mega Ray, because I can grab, say, another Hoopa from the discard pile after being, say, Parallel City or whatever, grab another Pokemon as well, and I'll be able to play both those Pokemon from my hand, and if, I, again, Hoopa's still got a bunch of VXs still in the deck, I can get a whole bunch of stuff and reset up my bench. Dragonite EX is a nice card that pairs with that. And it can go into a lot of other decks because it's colorless. Everything about it is actually really nice. So this card will be... It'll be a pretty competitive card. Uh, you've got Hyper Beam as well. 4 colorless energy. 130 damage. Discard energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Which isn't bad either. Considering I can still use Hyper Beam on the next turn. Unlike the video games. Hey! Now on to our trainers. That was all our Pokemon. I'm a little disappointed in some of the trainers, I'll be honest with you. We get a lot of reprints of some of the stuff. Uh, there have been a few adjustments, but overall, eh. We have Super Potion, heal 60 damage from one of your opponent's Pokemon. You have to discard an entry. So it's been given an additional 10 boost, but you still have to discard the energy. Eh. We have Energy Retrieval. Uh, put two... Put two basic energies from your discard pile back in your hand. This is a very useful card. I still think we have one in Standard. I might be wrong on that, but either way, it's still a good trainer. Um, I'm not afraid, I'm not sad that it's back, I'm just... We've had this already. Uh, we have Potion, not said. Uh, we have Revive, which I don't know if it's in Standard, but it's a good card because it puts a basic Pokemon from your discard pile back onto your bench. So if I really need that Dragonite, I can revive it, which is nice. Uh, we have a... Hold on. It's from your hand, so it doesn't the, the combo doesn't work like that, but either way. Uh, we have de-evolution spray. De -ev you get to devolve one of your Pokemon. Eh. We already had it in Breakpoint, so it's not brand new anymore. It's still... Sorry, guys. It's still around. It's not, not over the top. We'll see how it goes. It's still going to work great with Mega Alakazam, but that's about it. Uh, we have full heal, remove all special conditions from one of your Pokemon. 
Okay. I'm not gonna run full heal in my deck in case of that, because the likelihood of me actually getting the card when I'm paralyzed or poisoned isn't gonna probably show up. So I think this card is just bench warming. Like, it's not a great card. Uh, we have Switch. Uh, switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench. I love the artwork. We get to use it again. It's a good card. Do we have Switch in standard? Yes! Meh! Moving on. We have the Pokédex. Pokédex, look at the top five cards of your deck and put them back in t on top of your deck in any order. The only downside to this is you don't get to draw, so I still think Trainer's Mail is going to be a better thing, and if you really want to look at cards, maybe use Gallade for Premonition. Just my thing. Uh, next up we have Maintenance, another not a very good trainer. Uh, you have to shuffle two cards back from your hand into the deck, and if you don't have two cards, you can't use this, you get to draw one card. So not only do I have to shuffle those two cards back into the deck first, I could possibly draw that card back. I like it! Now here is where things get nice. Blastoise Spirit Link has finally been made. Blastoise can finally Mega Evolve without losing its turn. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Very, 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 very nice. And as you can guess, we got Pidgeot Spirit Link, Venusaur Spirit Link, Charizard Spirit Link. So we've got all those Spirit Links finally made. Charizard can finally go Mega. Venusaur can finally go Mega. With the Venusaur now being able to Mega Evolve turn one with the Mega Venusaur, you might be able to see it in some competitive format. Again, probably tier three, but even still, Venusaur is at least fun to play. The other two, we'll see how it goes. I might be wrong. I'm not the most competitive player. I know I try to be, but I don't know meta as well as a lot of other people do. Next up, though, we have a very interesting update to Professor Oak, and that's Professor Oak's Hint. If you use this card, your turn ends. Okay, but you get to draw cards until you have seven in hand, so it's not a terrible effect. It's a matter of, do I use Professor Oak now and get my cards back up, or do I just Sycamore? I don't know how much play this particular card is going to be. I know a lot of people like it because it reminds them of, I think it was Tropical Beach, where Tropical Beach was a stadium that lets you draw back up to seven, and then your turn ended. The benefit to that, though, is I could support still and draw cards with all those other things, and I had the option to use the stadium. This is, I use my supporter, that's my supporter for the turn, my turn ends, and all I have is seven cards. In a format with N, I don't like this because N can easily just disrupt you just like that, and it's a very common disruption. I don't know how much play it's gonna see. Personally, I don't think I'm gonna use it. I can just use a Sycamore and it, I get my results just as fast, and I can continue playing. So we'll see. We have Misty's Determination. Misty's Determination's still not my favorite supporter. It may be Misty. I just don't like the effect. I get to discard a card from my hand, first off. If you do, look at the top 8 cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. Or I could use Skylet, not discard a card from my hand and get whatever item card I want that could lead me into what I need to play. Or get me a supporter that can help me benefit in the next turn. Misty, I don't know how well you're going to play out. In pre-release format, this card is perfect because your deck is only 40 cards, so drawing from the 8 is really, really nice because you're literally looking at most of your deck anyway. But in a regular format, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know what your opinion is on Misty's Determination. And I'll, I'll, I'll gladly hear it. We also have Brock's Guts, which is actually Brock's Grit in English. Uh, shuffle six in any combination of Pokemon and basic energy from your discard pile into your deck. This is a very good supporter. One of the few good trainers in the set that I actually plan to use. Uh, this thing does help out Mega Rayquaza. This thing helps out anything that uses a lot of energy real quickly, so a fire deck or a good old zappy bird that wants a lot of energy. This is going to help it out. Uh, so we'll see how well it plays out. We've also got Double Colors Energy Gang and Reprint. I didn't grab one yet, so I'm kind of sad. And now, by the way, kudos to the Pokemon, uh, Poke Beach for using Double Colors Energy provides two chicken nuggets. Um. Also, I did forget to mention, we are using Poke Beach. A link will a uh, link to this good old site will be in the description below, so if you guys want to check out this list for yourself, it'll be there. Now, 
going on to the full arts because that is the entire set in its fullest. If you guys want to end the episode here, you guys can go for it. There's nothing really brand new. Oh no, actually I lie. There's secret rares and a few other things. So don't, don't drop that yet. There's a few other things you can see. Anyway, Venusaur X. As far as I know, this was not in the English set. I did not see anybody pull one, so I'm not 100% sure. But I don't believe, because these were our generation promos, so I don't think they're in the set. So I'll bypass these guys. We do have that gorgeous, 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 gorgeous Mega Venusaur full art though. Isn't that a beauty? I love it. I love it. I love it. Plan to get one, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is actually about to come up. We have the Charizard. Here is the full art Charizard, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna click on this. Ah, uh, that doesn't work. Can I move it? There we go. Come on, guys. Can you not agree that this card is absolutely stunning? Now, I know a lot of people are actually a little bit... Eh, it's just standing in one spot. It's a menacing dragon! What else do you expect from him? Mind you, he is a fire flying type, but not actually a dragon. But still, he's amazing looking! Next up, we have the Blastoise. And the full art Blastoise is also just as hype, and this thing is massive. Just look at that stare he has at you. He is intimidating. He's like, I'm going to blow you up with a cannon. What do you think? I'm going to blow you up with a cannon. Next up, we've got Pikachu, who's not even in the set. This Pikachu EX isn't even in the set. So for Japanese players, this is probably something to grab. For us, eh, we have it in our... Hollows and whatnot. Here's your Mewtwo full art. It is a very, very pretty full art, but it's not playable at all, in my opinion. I don't see it getting a lot of play. I'd rather use that secret rare Shadow Shot one. Now, here's a gorgeous, gorgeous card, and that is the Mega Pidgeot. We'll just move that over here. Can you not see the gentle non color in the background, the blues and whatnot? And it makes those reds just stand out so much more in its hair. Well, it's in feathers, I guess. But it's so majestic, it's so powerful, and it just looks so pretty. I can't wait to get my hands on one of these guys. We've got the Mega Pidgeot here, who's also pretty cool. It's got that same kind of blue effect going around it, like not as much, obviously, which still stands out the red in the color. It's very nice, I still want one. I do find the Pidgeot itself is better. We have full art Dragonite in all his glory. Again, this card is going to go for a lot of money because I think it's going to be a very competitive card. Especially to help out Mega Ray, who is one of the top tier decks. So to give it a new staple, and being as it's a colorless mon, beautiful. Next up, we have the full art Misty's Determination, which I know a lot of you guys are all hyping over because you guys love your Misty. I'm alright with it, it's just an okay looking card to me. I like the splashing effects that's coming out of her, it's, look, it's like she's charging at you from the water. It's not on my immediate radar. Brock? Brock I like as well. The full art supporters, like, to me the full art supporters are gorgeous. Having the original base trimming of the uh, original set, it looks really nice. Everything looks perfect for these cards, but uh, they're not my most sought out. They're not my most sought out full arts this time around. Now secret rares. This is where everybody kind of gets a little bit more fun. We've got a secret rare executor. Now secret rares are not in the rare slot. For those of you who are just getting into the evolution set, this one's a weird set because I know of people that actually pulled like all five pre-release, or all secret rares in the pre-release. It was amazing to see it. So I don't think they're all that calm, or like that rare. I don't know how valuable they're going to be. Uh, Executor, like I know most of the people that actually pulled one, like there's a lot of them. The rarest one I think was this guy here at my pre-release, which was the Doduo. Again, this guy can't even be played at a tournament. It's actually written at the bottom of the card in red. I know it's Japanese here. Uh, but you can't play this card in in Japanese. Like you, you, or in tournaments, sorry. You just can't play it. And the reason for it is it's got the ability Frenzied Escape. When this Pokemon retreats, whoo, 
throw it away. So it's got harmony, two colors, energy, 30 damage. That you may you must begin to sing a song. Fa la 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 la. When the song ends, the attack does 30 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you must sing first, and then you can do your damage. It's a gimmick, it's a fun little card, not playable, not legal in tournaments. I'm stoked that we actually got it in the English set though, and that makes up for a lot of things, because we don't usually get these kind of cards, and a lot of people expect that these to not be reprinted. But with them being so, it's nice, we actually get some humor in our card sets. Next up we have Team Rocket, uh, here comes Team Rocket, which is a new supporter. Uh, each player plays with his or her prize cards face up for the rest of the game. Cool. No town map necessary. But I wasted support to do so. And I help my opponent out as well because they get to choose their prizes that they want. I don't know, I don't like it. It's not a play- I don't find it all that playable, but it's nice to have these cards in the set because we never really got them. Now, these cards are also in the set, so I gotta go over them. We have Slowbro EX, which if you look at the borders and everything, he is awesome. Uh, it has Slack Off, heal 60 damage from this Pokemon. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. It's for two colorless energy. Um, unfortunately, if you want to heal, you can't use the Flash Splash, but that's okay. It's three water energy, 100 damage. We've also got Mega Slowbro, uh, three water energy. You get to use Lol Roll Spin. I guess it's Roll. Lol Roll Spin. Hundred, uh, it's 100 damage. Uh, this Pokemon is confused. During your next turn, this Pokemon's Lol Roll Spin does 100 more damage. So the potential to do 200 damage is there. You just gotta try and get rid of that confusion. Maybe you use Full Heal for this. I don't know. Just your op options. But, I don't know how well it will play out. We do have a Slowbro Spirit Link to go with it. And next up are two is another secret rare. Well, there is a fellow secret rare as well. It's the Flying Pikachu. Not on this list though, I don't believe. Uh, but this guy is. Uh, Surfing Pikachu, Surf. Nothing strong, nothing over the top, but it is a Pikachu with water energy. So it's cool. Uh, the gym badges are not in the set, I don't think. I did not see any, I did not draft any, and none of the people at my table drafted any. So, I don't think these guys made it into the set, but what did were the energies. We did get the energies. They're not shiny like these guys are, but we did get the energies in it as well, so that was a nice big turn of events for us as well. Uh, that is your Pokemon Evolution set list. My overall opinion on it is it's a very collecting set. I plan to try and collect the whole thing IRL. Overall playability. There's maybe like two or three cards that I would actually probably like switch in. Like again, that Dragonite, huge, huge, huge benefit to Mega Rayquaza. Uh, Brock Scrit, huge uh, benefit to Rayquaza in energy cards because you make you can choose it over the Fisherman to benefit. Um, but that is my opinion. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on the set as well. What cards do you really? plan to play with, what cards are you hyped for collecting purposes, let me know all this in the comment section below and I will catch you guys in the next video as I believe tomorrow and the next couple days we're going to be actually opening up the Braveheart tins that I missed a couple weeks back, uh, the Magirna, the Volcanion, and the Pikachu. So there's that to look forward to and evolutions will be very close because the previous pre-releases have already happened. Uh, I have already pre-ordered my cards so they're just waiting in the mail to come in and uh, I have a brand new mini series for you guys starting with that as well. So keep keep in touch with that. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Time out.